Proteus is an electronic design automation tool that supports analog signal simulation, digital signal simulation, and most importantly, microcontroller simulation. You can also design PC in Proteus. And this is the only simulation tool that supports a lot of microcontroller vendors such as ARM, Microchip, uh, Texas Instrument, Freescale, 8086. So if you are a maker, engineer, hobbyist, this is a must learn tool for you. So I am Shobhan Kardash. Currently, I am doing my PhD in Electrical Engineering. I have a 9 years experience of using Proteus. So in this video, I will teach you Proteus from the very beginning and will cover everything. So without further delay, let's get started. Throughout this course, I am going to use uh, Proteus Design Suite 8.6 and Proteus 7.8. In fact, it doesn't matter which Proteus version you use because most of the Proteus version has have the same interface. Okay, now I will open the schematic window and after clicking this button, new window will be pop up and this is the window where we will design our circuit. And before designing circuit, uh, let me introduce you uh, two button. The first one is actually um, selection button and this button is actually selection key and this is used for uh, um, connecting wire, move, rename, rotate and change component value and next button is actually uh, component mode and this button is used for picking component from the library. I am really excited because we will start designing circuit in uh, Proteus. So now we will design a simple voltage divider circuit. So to design this circuit, I need two components. The first one is uh, DC source um, and second one is resistor. Okay, so we need to know how we can search component for designing any circuit, right? Okay. To search for component, actually uh, we have to press component mode first, after that we have to press P button. So remember P button and after pressing the P button, a pickup device new window will pop up. Here we will search for our component. Okay, so first I need to search for DC source. So one thing we have to remember that whenever we will search for components, similar variant of the component will uh, come into the search. So this is the uh, battery active. Uh, current source and this is the uh, V source. I mean, this is the DC source we are looking for, and we can see that and uh, the symbol of the particular component. This is the symbol of the particular components. Okay, and to add this component into our design, we have to double click on this one. Remember, double click. Okay, after double clicking the component, this component added this browser. I mean, this is the component browser for my uh, circuit. Okay, and next I will look for resistor. Okay, so I'm really overwhelmed by the number of resistor here and I have to uh, pick the right resistor for my design. Uh, currently, I need the analog, I mean generic resistor for this design. So I will double click on this one as well. Okay, and actually rest of the component are resistor, but um, therefore uh, a specific vendor and different model of resistor, I don't need those one. So for my task, the generic resistor is fair enough. Okay, after that, I will click on OK to close this window okay so now i have the resistor and i have the voltage source right so now i will design the simple voltage divider circuit we will design our circuit inside this um, blue area and to zoom in or zoom out the sheet we have to rotate the mouse scroll bar and by this way we can change the uh, zoom position and the sheet position so to place the component first uh, we have to select the component after that we have to uh, click inside the sheet and now we can see that the voltage source is snapping with our mouse cursor right and uh, after that i just place the voltage source in this place now we will place the resistor the same way first resistor and second resistor for voltage divider circuit and now we can see that the resistor is in a, a horizontal orientation to change the orientation we have to click on right uh, mouse after that uh, rotate clockwise and same, same thing for this one and to change the position of the component we have to click left and drag the mouse okay and now the important part is we have to uh, connect the component so we have to uh, bring the component toward a terminal of a, um, a voltage source and now we can see that the mouse cursor changed pro from white to green right 
that means mouse cursor is ready to connect component now I will just left click and release the mouse cursor and see that the new green IR is actually connecting my termin I mean voltage terminal okay now if I want to change the direction of this wire I have to click again and after that I have to click again here and last click will be connect to the um, resistor similar way I can connect the rest of the component okay let's complete this connection okay now my now my simple uh, voltage divider circuit is ready for further analysis now it's time to uh, learn a new tool that is uh, terminal tool uh, I mean terminal mode after clicking this mode we can see that uh, ground so we have to bring the ground I mean to connect with our circuit and up just I uh, we have to select the ground and click on the schematic and we will see that ground is here and to connect the ground the same way we have connected rest of the uh, I mean components okay now ground is connected um, so we have to um, measure uh, something of this circuit so for this voltage divider circuit actually we will measure the current and voltage I mean this is a DC circuit so we will measure the DC voltage and DC current right so uh, to bring the DC voltage and DC current meter we have to click on the instrument mode and this instrument is actually very useful uh, for actually different type of uh, meter because in this instrument we will see that there are a lot of instrument we will see there is oscilloscope logic analyzer and virtual terminal and DC voltmeter AC meter AC voltmeter AC meter watt meter that means there is a lot of things in this instrument mode and for this circuit we particularly need DC voltmeter okay so DC we will place the DC voltmeter here for this one and second DC voltmeter here and same way we will connect the DC voltmeter with our circuit because we are going to measure DC voltage um, uh, I mean along the resistor so we will connect this way and for this resistor, we will connect the DC voltage meter this way. So our circuit is ready for simulation. Before simulating the circuit, uh, let me tell you that Proteus has two types of simulation. The first one is um, interactive simulation and that is most popular and second one is graph based simulation. That is not popular but that helps um, sometimes for analysis circuit. Okay. Now to start the uh, interactive simulation we have to start button run the simulation button this button and after pressing this button simulation started and we can see that voltage across the resistor is 0.5 and 0.5 that is right because if the source is 1 volt and the resistor value is 10k and 10k so voltage should be 0.5 and 0.5 volt right. To measure the current we need to place a, a DC emitter in this um, position so before that we have to uh, delete this wire um, but before deleting wire we need to know we cannot uh, do any edit uh, while the simulation is running so we have to stop the simulation by pressing this button right and to delete a wire we have to um, right click on a particular wire and after that we will see the option delete wire this will delete the whole wire okay fine now we need to connect the uh, DC emitter to pick the DC emitter we have to go to instrument mode and after that we have to select the DC emitter right and DC emitter is selected now we will connect the DC emitter same way we connected rest of the component in the circuit right the DC emitter is connected okay now we will run the simulation again and uh, we see that the voltage is 0.5, 0.5 because the source voltage is 1 volt but the current is not showing because the register value and voltage register value is too high and voltage is too low that's why the current is actually uh, in the range of uh, micro milliamps so that's why it's not showing so we have to uh, change the component value right so to change the component we have to um, stop the simulation again and to change the component particular component we have to double click on the component and after double clicking we'll see that the um, reference name and reference uh, value right so this uh, should be 10 volt for this situation and register value this is uh, maybe um, just 10 ohms is fair enough and for this one 10 ohms so by this way we can change the component 
value just clicking um, I mean just double clicking on a component after that I will start the simulation again and now I can see the uh, DC current is 0.5 amp and that is theoretically right because if uh, I divided uh, 10 volt by 20 ohm that should be 0.5 amps okay now I will demonstrate an exciting tool of Proteus that is oscilloscope so we need two components for this the first one is sine wave generator and register so okay let's grab the component from component mode okay i need sine wave generator and the first one is current signal and second one is voltage signal so i need the voltage signal voltage sine wave generator and then i need the register okay so we are going to use the same register we used before that is a generic one okay that's all i need to demonstrate the sign i mean oscilloscope okay so we will design the simplest ac circuit that is a sine wave and a resistor okay let's rotate this component okay now we will connect this resistor with the voltage source i mean ac voltage source okay and now we will connect the ground Tada! the circuit is ready for connecting the oscilloscope right okay now we will actually bring the oscilloscope from the instrument mode so we have demonstrated before that in the instrument there are a lot of instrument we can use in our circuit i mean we, we in our simulation right so the first one is the oscilloscope we are going to use now okay so we can see that there are four channels of this oscilloscope that means at the same time we can see or signal using this oscilloscope same as physical oscilloscope okay so we are going to connect and the channel a uh, with this uh, terminal of the voltage i mean resistor or voltage source okay so our circuit is complete and now i will click the simulation button oh there is no signal in the oscilloscope why there is no signal in the oscilloscope because all are actually zero the problem is we have designed our circuit but we haven't configured the component because if I just double click on this sine wave signal, we can see that the DC offset is default. That means all of all the value are actually default value. That means all the value are just nullify or zero, right? So we have to set all those value. So we are not going to set DC offset, but we have to set the amplitude of the sine wave. So I will set uh, 12 volt and frequency that is 60 hertz. Okay, I think those two parameters are enough for our demonstration, right? So now. I will click the OK button and if I just um, press the start again, now I will see the sine wave generator. And, and the cool thing about this, I can move this oscilloscope and also if I just um, rotate the scroll bar, uh, we can see that the, I mean, we can see that the oscilloscope window is squeezing or spreading, right? So this is so cool. We can also change the position of the signal by clicking this, I mean, the changing this uh, position of this button. We can also um, change the division factor of this oscilloscope by changing this knob. So this is just like a real oscilloscope. You see, it is so cool. I, I really like this feature of this oscilloscope. Okay, fine. So now we know how to use oscilloscope in our circuit, right? Okay, now I will show you a, a different thing that we sometimes uh, face while simulating a circuit, right? right? So sometimes we just uh, cut this off. And next time, okay, next time when we start the simulation, the oscilloscope doesn't come. The problem is that uh, the oscilloscope is there, but we have to bring the oscilloscope from the debug and digital oscilloscope. By this way, we can bring the same oscilloscope we used earlier. So this is the trick we need to know because this happens most of the time. And, and when I started learning oscilloscope, I faced this many times and I couldn't figure out where is my oscilloscope, okay. Previously, we learned how to use DC voltmeter and DC emitter. We also need to know how to use AC voltmeter and emitter. Okay, so let's connect AC voltmeter and emitter, same as um, before. So we have to go to the uh, oscilloscope, I mean instrument mode, and from the instrument mode, we have to bring the uh, AC voltmeter, same as before, and AC emitter, same as before. The problem is that actually uh, we cannot um, use DC voltmeter while we are actually dealing with AC signal. So that, that's the reason for actually demonstrating this portion. Okay, let's connect the AC voltmeters same as, uh, I mean, before we have connected because uh, the voltage 
meter will be in parallel and the current meter will be in series right this way okay so if i if i just run the simulation now so we can see that the voltage is uh, 8.48 uh, that is the rms voltage because uh, we have set the uh, amplitude uh, 12 so that's why rms should be 8.48 right and the current is not showing that because the resistor value is 10k that sees that no significant current is flowing that's why we cannot see the current value okay let's set this to uh, 5 ohms okay now if i just run the simulation and we can see that the current is 1.7 and the voltage is 8.48 that is the rms current and there is the rms voltage right proteus is very popular for interactive animated simulation but it has another advantage of using graph mode and most of the time we overlook the graph feature but graph feature is very convenient when we want to see the signal for a particular time frame so also when we need to capture signal for a particular time frame for research paper or report we need to use the graph mode so now i will discuss how we can use the potential of graph mode in proteus okay let's get started so to plot the graph first we have to go to the graph mode this uh, button after that we will see that there are few types of graph we can analyze in proteus analog digital mixed frequency transfer dc sweep ac sweep and, and few more types right so for this uh, circuit we have to actually look into the analog signal that means what is the sine wave current and voltage so we will pick the analog mode and after clicking on the analog mode what we have to do we just click on a any point of the um, window and after that just drag the, drag the mouse and just click again so this will create the graph and this is the graph so if we want we can create another graph so first let me show you this graph so graph print is done right so what we have to do we have to uh, identify which point or which type of graph we want to see so actually for this circuit we want to see the voltage of this point and current of this wire right so so we have to actually install probe for watching any particular point so installing probe we have to go to the probe mode this is the probe mode and in the probe mode we see that there are three types of actually probe voltage current and tape so first we will pick the voltage probe and after that we will place the voltage probe in this point okay right and after that okay uh, we, we will see the current uh, i mean we will see the current probe later after watching the voltage source. okay so now how i will i identify my graph that to plot this um, voltage at this position so to do this what i what we have to do we will just click on this probe and drag this probe on uh, onto the graph so now my probe is actually pointing this graph and if i if i press the space bar this will simulate the graph for one second you can see it is simulating the graph for one second so what we have to do we have to press space bar for simulating the circuit for one second right so the point is I do not want to see the signal for one second because I want to see the signal for 100 milliseconds. So to do that, what we have to do, we have to click the this uh, graph. I mean, you have to press the double click. So this will bring the graph mode properties. So in the graph mode, we will see that start time is zero and stop time is 100. Uh, I mean, one second. So here we will just uh, input 100 millisecond, 100 m. That means 100 millisecond. So by this way, we can just put the i mean we can identify which time frame we want to see the graph for a particular signal okay that's right that is so cool right and the good point is we can print this graph for our uh, report or research paper okay then moving forward we want to see the current at this wire right so what we have to bring we have to bring the current probe and similarly we have to place the current probe in this position right and after that we can what we can just see at the same way we have done before we have to just drag this current probe and drop here and after that we have to press the space bar remember space bar and a space bar after pressing the space bar the circuit will be simulated and the corresponding graph will be shown in this uh, graph window so this is so cool right and the good point is that we can actually uh, see any number of graph and just placing here in the same simulation so let me show you that if we want to see the another graph just 
same way we can just place and drag and drop see so that means so we can actually uh, plot any type of graph any number of graph in this window we want so this is so i mean this is so powerful for reporting and analyzing graph for a particular time frame because using interactive simulation we cannot capture our signal for a particular time frame think about uh, we need to capture the signal at uh, 50 millisecond but we cannot do that using interactive simulation but using graph simulation we can do that and we can actually capture capture i mean we can also see the transient behavior of a signal by this way okay so now we will learn an interesting animation option that is um, sometimes useful um, such as uh, watching the current direction and also watching the voltage potential of different point of a circuit so to visualize this we need to actually um, design a simple circuit that is um, 705 voltage i mean linear regulator so we need 705 for this and after that uh, we need a resistor for load the same resistor we used earlier and then we need a dc source the same dc voltage source we used earlier okay let's complete the circuit uh, we need a voltage source and after that we need 705 and the resistor is a load let's rotate this resistor so that we can connect uh, with the circuit properly and we need a uh, ground from the terminal mode so i can i can i think uh, that's all we need to complete this circuit right now we will change the properties of the different uh, component for 705 the voltage uh, should be more than 7 so let's put this 8 volt and the load is uh, let's put this uh, 10 ohm or oh, no 100 ohm is good enough okay so the my point is actually uh, if i just ask you what is the current direction of this wire maybe you cannot say and it's easy to actually visualize current direction of this wire as well as this wire but not this wire okay so to visualize this we will actually activate uh two options before that let's change the position of this circuit a little bit here okay now let's start the simulation and after starting the simulation we cannot see anything because we haven't any connected we haven't connected any uh, meter with the simulation let's connect a dc volt meter with the output and start the simulation again and we can see that the output is 5 volts that is the job of 705 to convert a more than 7 volt into 5 volt that's a linear regulator so my point is not actually this my point is to demonstrate animation options so to demonstrate this we have to activate two options from system set animation option and after that we can see that we have to mark two options show our voltage by color and show our current with arrows and after marking this two option press ok and if now if we just press the simulation wow now we can see the current direction of all the wires that's so awesome and this is the good feature of uh, simulation it's very helpful while debugging actually big analog circuits as well as mixed signal circuits and you can see that and um, the current direction is showing this way also the current direction of this um wire. and also another point is that all the um i mean positive terminal uh, wires are red and all the actually ground wires are just green so this is so cool if we want to actually visualize the current direction and voltage potential of different points okay so now i will demonstrate how we can simulate uh, digital logic circuit in proteas so for demonstration i will use hapeda circuit so for hapeda circuit i need actually two logic gates first one is or gate and second one is end gate so let's get the component first then we'll discuss everything one by one okay for for getting the zor gate i just need to write xor zor so it will show the all components related to zor gate so i'll pick this one for my zor gate and next i need the n gate a and b so there are a lot of options for n gate so i will pick this one because this is the default one and then i need to another uh, component the first one is logic probe 
so that I can see the output of um, logic gates and next I need the logic state so that I can set the input of logic um, gates LOGs, logic state so that's all I need to build the uh, habitat circuit so let's build the habitat circuit so let's place the ZOR gate first and then end gate so to set the input i will use logic state this one that this will be the logic a and this will be the logic b and so now i will connect this with zor gate first then i will connect with end gate so similarly i am connecting the circuit similarly demonstrated in the figure so for connecting the end gate so this will goes this wire and the second will goes the first wire and for actually visualizing the output, we will use logic probe, this one. Second logic probe for KD. First logic probe for SUM. Okay, now our circuit is ready. Let's run the simulation. Okay, so now we will match our input and output with this um, actually a logic table. So you can see that this is A and this is B. So this is the um, these two are inputs and this is sum and this is carry so for um, a and b is 0 0 sum is 0 and carry is 0 that is right for a is 0 and b is 1 let's change this 1 so we can see that sum is 1 and carry is 0 and let's um, change a to 1 and b to 0 a to 1 b 0 then we will see, we'll see that sum is 1 and carry is 0 that's right and if we just change this um, to 1 as well, we'll see that sum is 0, carry is 1. So we can see that we can actually intuitively uh, simulate any logic gate inside Proteus. The good thing about Proteus is that we can actually build a, a small processor inside Proteus. So in my during my undergrad, so I have uh, designed a simple as possible computer inside Proteus. So because um, Proteus is intuitive and simulation is intuitive, that means we can actually um, build a um, small to larger scale um, logic circuit inside Proteus and we can also uh, see the um, uh, input and output in intuitive way and in an animated way. Okay, so now I'll demonstrate uh, DC sweep. So think about this um, um, graph. So this is a graph of transistor characteristic curve. So in this characteristic curve, we can see that um, the IC versus VC that means collector current versus collector to emitter voltage so we can actually um, simulate this uh, I mean we can actually simulate this graph using DC sweep so idea of DC sweep is that I will change one variable think about uh, I'm changing VC voltage uh, from 0 to 12 and now I want to visualize the collector current so that's the main goal of this um, demonstration so for demonstrating this we need a transistor current source and voltage source let's uh, pick those elements so i need a um, bc547 that is my popular uh, that is one of the popular transistors and, and that's my favorite transistor also so i'll pick this one and i need a uh, dc source so for as dc source i will use current source as well as voltage source okay my source is ready so let's build the circuit okay so think about this one and this is actually this curve is actually fixed for um, base current of 20 milliampere uh, microampere so and this current is actually uh, this curve is for base current of 40 microampere and this curve is actually for base current of 60 microampere so think about i want to actually simulate for base current of 40 microampere so i need current source for this one so this is a current source and i will just rotate this one and before rotate and before uh, rotating uh, let me show you another shortcut so i want to rotate this one so i will use um, number lock key and minus so this will actually give me the option to rotate using shortcuts and then i need a voltage source here and i also need to rotate this one for change i mean fixing the polarity okay and now i also need the ground connection so that i can um, use the ground as a reference point this point and i will change the base current so my circuit is almost complete so my test circuit is almost complete right 
So the idea is I will fix the base current to 40 microampere. Okay, let's fix this one. 40 Q. And after that, I will change the collector to emitter voltage from 0 volt to 12 volt, right? So I will just um, keep this as a variable such as X. And now I need the DC sweep um, so that I can actually emulate the DC. I need the actually um, DC sweep graph. So I will go to the graph option and I will bring the DC sweep graph. And I will just draw a window so that I can see the DC sweep graph in this window. Okay, so now as my sweep variable is X, I have to mention in the DC sweep uh, graph, just double clicking on this one. And also now my DC sweep variable is X also and my start value is 0 and in value is 12. Okay. Okay. And I, now I need to see the collector currents inside the DC sweep variable so, can, so that I can emulate this graph. Okay. Let's um, bring the current probe current and connect current probe here and I also now I also use um, the number lock key and minus so that I can rotate using shortcut and this rename this one to IC collector current and bring this one click drag and drop inside the graph mode and press the space bar or right click on it and simulate graph so see this is so good actually now I can see the same graph as the I mean, just like the textbook, that means I'm changing the collector to emitter voltage in this X direction. And now I am visualizing the collector current in the Y direction. So that means after certain, uh, I, I mean, after certain variable, the collector to emitter current is saturated, almost saturated. And now I will change the collector current to uh, 40 microampere to 100 microampere. Um, from here 100 microampere let's change this one let's see what happens okay now we see that the collector maximum current is around 10 milliampere and I have changed the base current now it changes to 20 micro sorry 20 milliampere right and let's change this to 10 milli microampere and let's simulate again now see the collector current reduces significantly so this is so cool, right? That means using this technique, we can actually um, emulate any or simulate any characteristics curve of any devices. I mean, whatever the circuit we want to do. Okay, let's move forward. So now we will learn an advanced feature of Proteus that is simulating uh, Arduino board inside Proteus so that whenever we are building any project based on Arduino so that we can validate our sketch creating all the sensors and Arduino board inside the Proteus. If you don't have any experience with Arduino, so please uh, see that there is description below because I have a 10 minutes video on getting started with Arduino. Also you can see another video that is how to generate hex file so that you can use that hex file to simulate inside Proteus. So to get started with Arduino, we need to pick the components so that we can build the bare minimum Arduino Uno board. So to build the bare minimum Arduino board, actually we need 80 mega 328 microcontroller. That is the actually base microcontroller of uh, Arduino Uno board, 80 mega 328. So after that, we have to add that into our um, component browser. And after that, we need another component that is actually potentiometer so that we can use the analog um, pin for reading the analog value. So we have to search port HG. So this will actually bring the potentiometer into the search bar. So that's all we need to actually simulate Arduino. So let's build the minimum Arduino board. Okay, we have to place the Arduino Uno 80 mega 328 microcontroller into our um, project browser. I mean project window. Okay, so this is the actually Arduino main microcontroller. So actually for simulating Arduino, we just need this microcontroller. We don't need anything else. But the problem is we have to configure this microcontroller in such a way so that it actually behaves as a Arduino Uno board, okay? So what we have to do, we have to change actually um, three things. First, we have to change, uh, I mean, first we have to double click on the Arduino Uno board, I mean 80 mega 328 microcontroller. After that, we have to uh, clock div divided by clock it. We have to just select unprogram this one. And after that, we have to change the 
CK ACL fuses and we have to select this full swing crystal I mean this option so and then we have to set the clock frequency 16 megahertz so there's three change we have to do for actually simulating Arduino Uno in inside Proteus okay so now we need an example Arduino sketch so that we can demonstrate how the everything is working so to actually generate uh, example Arduino sketch we have to um, open the Arduino IDE and after that we have to open an example and basic analog grid serial so this is the basic serial um, function so we are going to demonstrate so this is actually what this is doing so this is actually reading serial input and just print that into the serial terminal so I said before if you don't have experience with Arduino you can see my introductory video on Arduino in that video I explained everything and demonstrate how you can build that in hardware okay so moving forward so we need to save this sketch so that we can actually generate the binary file to simulate that in inside the Proteus so we are going to save this sketch in my desktop and after that we have to generate hex file and go to sketch export compile binary so this will actually generate hex file inside the folder so I have saved this uh, sketch in, in, into my desktop so I have to look that into my desktop and this is the folder I have saved my sketch and here this is the hex file analog grid serial ino dot standard dot hex so this is the hex file I need to simulate this actually program inside Proteus okay I will copy the location of this sketch and after that I will go again to the Proteus so now I need to actually point the sketch into the Proteus so that my Proteus program understand that this is the Arduino program we need to simulate so for that we have to double click on this one and after that sorry we have to double click on this one and after that we have to uh, demo, uh, I, we have to point that program file that we just generated now so we have to go to the desktop and after that we have to go to the analog serial and this is the binary file we need to uh, point into the Arduino program so actually this program is actually reading analog read analog signal from a0 pin that is the ADC0 pin and print that value into the serial terminal so we need to we need to connect serial terminal with this um, actually newly configured Arduino Uno board and also we need a potentiometer so that we can understand the analog value is changing so what we will do we will just connect the potentiometer uh, with the ADC 0 that is the analog pin 0 okay and after that uh, for configuring potentiometer we have to connect one terminal with ground so this is the ground and another terminal with power pin that means 5 volt pin so we have to go to the terminal mode and bring the power that is the default VCC pin of the Arduino and after that we have to connect this terminal with the ADC 0 so to do that we need to move the whole I mean we need to change the um, orientation of this whole block so we will select the whole block by this way and after that we we'll right click on this and block rotate and there is a few options you can do so x mirror so so this will actually mirror the um, connection I mean uh, potentiometer okay now we will connect the uh, potentiometer middle terminal terminal with the Arduino a0 pin okay and after that we need to complete another connection that is needed for actually um, for ADC to work properly that is connect a um, VCC pin with a VCC okay and to see the uh, Arduino value into the serial terminal we can use the um, Proteus serial terminal so that we can get from the uh, instrument so in this mode okay in the instrument we will see that there is a virtual terminal that we can leverage for visualizing the serial value so we have to rotate this I mean X mirror we have to mirror this one so that we can connect this with the RX TX and in the case of serial connection we have to connect RX pin with the TX pin this one so this is the TX pin of Arduino and TX pin with the RX pin this one so now the circuit is complete and now the good point is if we just run the simulation start the simulation we will see the magic you can see that it's showing 512 and if we change the potentiometer position we will see that value is also changing see 
it is 195 that means now the voltage is low and if I increase the voltage you will see that ADC value is changing this way so this is so cool right that means we can simulate Arduino into Proteus without using any external library so this is so great and Arduino is actually Proteus is very popular for simulating such embedded system or microcontroller project actually this is the speciality of um, Proteus because this is the only software that support vast majority of microcontroller so we are at the end of this video tutorial so i hope you enjoyed the journey um, proteus learning journey with me and please put your comment um, in the comment section if you have any request for future video and don't forget to like and subscribe my channel um, now i will just demonstrate another thing that is uh, whenever you will get stuck in your project uh, something like you are doing a difficult project or you are building a robot or you are simulating anything or you are building real hardware so whenever you will get stuck where will you get help from so so you, if you just go to the help segment of um, the proteus let me uh, show to go to the proteus first so if you go to the help segment of the proteus so you will see that um, there are um, schematic capture help, schematic capture tutorial help, and simulation help. You can see all those help segments. So, but the, my main goal was not to actually demonstrate these things. My main goal was to. There are a lot of projects actually Proteus already um, built. Um, I mean, there are a lot of projects uh, Proteus already built uh, with different microcontrollers and different um, analog and electronic components and digital components. So you can actually see all those um, projects and get help from all those projects and use in your um, own project so let me show you one example that i actually like most maze solving robot so that is a arduino jumo uh, robot maze solver so if i just open this one you will see that um there is um, this is actually amazing this is just um, behaving just like a real maze solving robot okay let me run the simulation first so see and if i just start the maze solving robot it will solve the maze automatically i just need to just push this button. so this is so cool right so that means it's also line following robot as well as a maze solving robot that means there are a lot of um, um simulation and a lot of projects um proteus already um built with their um proteus um, uh, simulation software so you can explore all the software and use in your project so i think that's all for this video thank you very much for watching